I've just beat Baldur's Gate 3 on Tactician mode and got this critical hit achievement. Only 1% of players got this achievement yet, but still there's 5 more, more rarer achievements in Baldur's Gate. And because right now I'm too busy beating Baldur's Gate with potato and sausage, I decided to try and make all 5 most rare achievements in Baldur's Gate 3 just in one day. So let's try to do it. First achievement on my list will be Jack of All Trades. To get it, I need to multiclass into every class in one playthrough without using wizards. If we try to do it from the start of the game, it will give us horrible character that is totally unplayable. And it's really hard to beat the game like that. But I guess I got an idea how to do it in 10 seconds. So step number one, I just load in one of my late game save files and just remove one of my party members with great build from my party. So, Astarian, goodbye, hello my stash. Oh, that's horrible in this late game. And in this playthrough I haven't used Karlak even once. So now when I'm level 12 I just can go and multiclass Karlak into every class. Every party member level ups with your main character, so we can easily do it when our main party is level 12 and Karlak is just level 1. So let's just see, will we get achievement? Yes, I got one of the rarest achievements in Baldur's Gate 3. You can go and try it yourself and write the comment that you got it. We will make this achievement from most rare to most common achievement in the game together. And I'm going into my second achievement, so right now I'm going to load one more save file. And for this achievement I need to destroy 20 opponents while drunk. I got this awesome save over here. We are in Act 3, and we are in the Elf Song Tavern. So, we just speak with this boy, Chef Rover, and we're going to the right over here. There should be some chests with some wine, maybe. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of wine. And to do it fast and easy, I guess we need to take some wine from the wine rack. Or I guess we can buy it from this dude. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Bartender got wine in the tavern. What a surprise. So we buy all wine basically. And going into basement. But first of all, our main character who will be killing everyone while drunk will be Lazel. She is my cleric right now. And just let's go. So as you can see, we got a lot of reds over here. And we need just to make Lazel drunk. Let's drink this craft of wine. Now she's drunk, we can just turn on Spirit Guardians, I guess any level will be nice. And let's just run all over this place, let's give her host. So we're hostened. And this I guess like 10 reds. And we can use dash. And that's it, we're done. Yeah, one more rare achievement just in 10 minutes. That's insane. And for next achievement, we're going to the beginning of Act 3, to the circus area. So first of all, we need to go back to camp, I guess. I will get rid of all my party members. So stay in the camp, Gale. Okay, and now we're going to wizards. And what I want to do, I want to get hirelings. I'm not exactly sure will this build faster or not, but let's do it this way. So I just need a lot of bards. I will get hireling bard and I'm changing my class too. So I'm switching to bard, maxing out our charisma. And most importantly, we need this performance skill proficiency. And basically I'm changing every hireling class to bard too. We want like best bard band possible. And when we're leveling up to third level, always pick performance, so we got plus 7 to performance right now. And enhance ability spell. And let's get back to the circus. My idea for this achievement is simple, we just need to go to the crowd that's seeking entertainment and start playing our instruments. And we will get some money, we need to get 100 money, but can we enhance this stuff with enhance ability? So we get an advantage on charisma checks. And of course we want to inspire all our party members. I'm not sure if this works actually, but let's check this out. So everyone inspired, let's get in the middle of the crowd and just start performing. 
I guess we go with the power, my favorite. Okay, performance successful, and it's using combat inspiration, so yeah, it's definitely using some stuff. And we want to interfere this crowd, I guess there's a little bit more crowd over here. And we're basically standing in the crowd all over the place and starting to play our songs. And no one giving us money. But all we need to do is to basically stop performing. And now we just need to collect gold, I guess. Okay, we got one. Oh my god, I got only one gold. No, two gold. This will take a while, I guess. Let's try to do it over here where this crowd is just doing nothing okay everyone is happy give me gold nice 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 look how much gold we got so i guess best and fastest way to do it is just to go to different places with my group okay here here is starting to to, to doing some stuff so we need to wait performance check i guess and yeah it's using our charisma modifier it's using our proficiency and difficulty class 20. so we need to roll 20 for this check because there's a large crowd. So how much money I will make over here? Let's check this out. Give me gold! Oh my god, nice. There's definitely some bunch of gold over here. So you will see like crowd going and surrounding you. That means you succeed on check. So no one coming nearby. Okay, I guess these guys just don't have any money left. We need just to go and find another place. Let's just teleport somewhere in the middle of the town. Just let's go to the street. And yeah, definitely last act is like the best place to perform. There's lots of people. There's just lots of crowd over here. And the idea is simple, okay. Eagle Splendor to have advantage in charisma checks. Have additional bot in your party to give you inspiration. So you not fail your check. And just collect the gold with your main bard. And you can split them in parties of two, of course. And basically with one check we can do around 8, 10 gold in like... 20 seconds okay performance successful and i guess this will be the last one the last one i need only eight gold so we will find out right now do we need to actually finish this stuff now give me gold yeah i did it i did it. so you don't need to pick this gold up and you can do it a lot faster like two times faster i guess most uh, time consuming moment will be this gold picking up and now we go into spicy achievements let's go so, I just got most rare achievements in Baldur's Gate 3, but what is the last two achievements I need to get to get all five most rare achievements? And these two will take a lot longer than just two minutes, because I need to start new game. Sins of the Father can only be claimed if you're playing as Dark Urge campaign, while she cannot be caged achievement, where we need to rescue Saza from three locations, again need to be started from the first act of the game. To get these achievements I need to actually beat the game, I can't use just some speedrunning techniques, because I need to go and complete some quests and become real Dark Urge. But that's how I will try and make it as fast as possible. I'm getting sorcerer with enhanced sleep and feather fall. This gives me ability basically to jump higher distances and skip a lot of time traveling. This approach will skip a lot of quests and we will be under leveled and it will be really hard to beat last boss in the game. But in Act 3 we will get a lot of experience so we will catch up on levels somehow. Main goal from the start of the game in Act 1 will be just to go and find all your companions This will give you best level possible from the start of the game. And that's where a fun part happened. I tried to pull out the Gale from this teleport location, but I failed skill check and, and I tried to reroll it once. With one more failure. And that's like crazy, because we won't meet Gale anywhere. Still, we need Gale only for speedrunning stuff and we are playing almost normally. After first goblin find, I'm entering the village. Getting Will companion over here with nice dialogue. But most importantly, I need to get to this door. Here's Saza, and we need to rescue her from three different locations. That's a nice place to save over here because I don't want to fail like I failed with the Gale. So, after some intimidation checks, Tieflings that tried to kill Saza going away. So, we can talk with Saza and try to free her up. This will require saving tools and lockpicking this cage. And after successful lockpicking attempt, we need to go and free her up from this camp. There's a nice road from the backside of the cage. There will be a little fight over here, but it's pretty easy. 
And after we finish all goblins in the cave, we can go outside. So Saza is free and she will lead us to the goblin camp. And just after entering camp, I found Saza in Mintara's room. So all I need to do right now is to just ask Mintara not to kill Saza. And that's it, we saved her second time. And we don't care what happens next, so I can go and continue my way to the Moonrise Towers. I went through the roadside cliffs, and this is fastest way to go to the cursed lands. But we got some minor fight over here with undeads. But because my party is so underleveled right now and don't have any gear, best way to go through this fight is to basically go through this fight and just run away from these undeads. So just a few dashes, flee from combat and we are in the camp. Go back from the camp and we are free from the battle. After entering cursed lands, instead of going to these guys from absolute, best option to go forward by yourself. This way you can ask nicely lantern from the spider guy and get pixie blessing without any fights. After that I went to the last light inn and got some awesome gear that I possibly could get from the traders. As I told you, we need to be in the battle sometimes when we're playing like this, so we need some gear. And that's because I went back to the roadside cliffs. And when we see Gitsyanki, I start to fight immediately. That's actually a very hard battle to go through. Even few Gitsyanki can do insane amounts of damage. But Trader in Kurushia got nice items, so we got some nice gloves and nice sword for our Asterion. With these items I easily beat boss in Kurushia. Actually not easily, it took me like 3 attempts. But I'm here for cool item for Cleric, so I throw Grease Bottle on this statue so I can move it. And move statues to go through the secret door. Coolest part in this place we live in danger zone. This means we can easily fast travel. But I don't need to do it now, first of all I need to unlock doors and go to the last room of this dungeon. And right now it's time to go with all our party to the camp leaving only one member behind and taking Light of La Thunder. This will activate Trap, but thanks to Magic Pockets we can transfer Blood of La Thunder to other party members. Astarion can't escape this trap alone, but honestly we don't care, every Git Yankee just blown up. And party magically teleports to the cliff, where we can easily resurrect Astarion. And now back to Cursed Lands, so we're meeting Saza again in the Moonlight Towers. And that's last place where we need to just ask not to kill Saza. And just like that, finally our achievement is done. But still we need one more last achievement. And to do it I need to get to Act 3 as soon as possible. But first of all we need to go to the Shar Temple and fight our way through. But it's very nice that we got awesome magical artifacts. So even strong bosses is not a problem. It took me around half an hour to finish all this dungeon. And we can get back to Moonrise Towers to finish our task and get to Act 3. Basically a level 5 power spike is really helpful to win every battle at this point of the game. Spells like Spirit Guardians and Fireball is just insane. And I went into final battle of Act 2. In speedruns I saw some cheesy way to go through this battle when you want to go to Act 3, but I just haven't figured out how you can pull this off. Every time I try to do it, Ketrick just going down and always trying to kill my party. So I guess it was patched, or I just don't know how to trigger effect where Ketrick turns standing in place and you just zap him every turn. So I was forced to play this battle normally, it was hard, I almost died, but we did it. And just like that I'm ready to go into Baldur's Gate, even as low level sorcerer. My main goal here is just to get level 10 as fast as possible. But honestly it's really easy in Act 3, because even just small talking quests that you just go and pass some intimidation check one time, even with difficulty checks as low as just 10, will award you with whooping 800, 1000 or even more experience points. Just by entering new zones you can instantly level up. Look how much experience I got just by traveling into another area. But to truly become Dark Ursh, I first of all need to go to the Open Hand Temple and start my investigation quest. Step number one, go through the hatch. Then we need to find secret buttons and unlock secret door. Kill guys in the cave, it's easy because we are pretty high level right now. Get all gear from them and report to Detective Valeria, this little like butterfly elephant in the tavern. Go to the house on the other side of the street. Take your path up the stairs. And one more time on the ladder, 
with the key that we got from the guys from the cave, we enter in secret room, checking out under the bed, getting everything we possibly can from this room, reading every letter and getting back to the tavern. And after reporting to this elephant one more time, we can go to the lower city. And right now we just need to complete this uh, investigation quest. But my game became just a mess when I entered the lower city. Uh, look at this delay between attacks uh, and damage numbers, everyone acting slow, that's just crazy, awful and unplayable. So input luck is insane and I want to finish this quest, this last rarest achievement as fast as possible. And by the way, if you got the same problem, my investigation led to this idea. When you're playing as Dark Ursh after entering lower city, you will get this stuff. I already played through this game three times before this and this one only time when I got this awful bug and it continues until end of the game. And that's only time where I played Dark Urge. So after completing this quest, we can go and enter into secret door in the tombstone shop. This will lead to a ballist temple or sort of. So we just speak with scary dude and destroy an elephant. This makes us unholy assassin of Baal, which is another achievement in the game if you need them. And now on the thing to left before end of the game, I need my nether stones. So I'm entering Baal Temple where I need to find Orin. But doing things in this order will make it a duel, so I cast Hust on myself, speak with Orin and now we are in the duel. Coolest part, there is no ritual, so no unstoppable on her and we can do and inflict every damage type we possibly need. I went safe road and just blow her up with magic missile. As Hasted Sorcerer it's easy to do because we can cast magic missiles three times in one turn. Look at this awful performance. And after getting Odin's nether stone I need to get the last one. This means I need to fight Gortosh. I tried to choose uh, this fight but I decided just to go through and play it normally. But here are some tips how you can go through this fight easily. First of all your main damage dealers should have low dexterity, therefore low initiative. Gortosh got this bubble that protects him from every damage source. But when it's Gortosh time to take a turn, bubble just disappears from him magically. And now he takes his turn, doing his magic or whatever. And you are free to inflict damage to him with every character that acts after him. This way with Hasted Karlak and main character I just killed Gortosh in one turn. But Gortosh isn't biggest problem in this fight, these still watchers is a lot stronger than him. But I got solution, there's a lot of traps in this room that spawn these little bombs. And you just move them freely without using any action, so you just uh, move uh, these uh, like bombs to the still watchers. And use someone to detonate these bombs, so these bombs will kill Steel Watchers. Bombs do an insane amount of damage and can kill Steel Watchers, even Steel Watchers in one turn. That's cool, fun and I can go and kill last boss. After entering the last zone of the game, we enter in this chapel or wherever and we will have friends in this area. Everyone we saved or helped in our adventure, but in this adventure we got like no one. This really hard fight in front of us. How can we beat this fight with underleveled, undergeared, weak characters without any help? Cleric deity, so we can summon late game supplies. Most importantly, we get some potions. Yeah, you can buy these potions beforehand. But I was so low on money all the game, so I got no potions at all. So how I will play this last fight? I won't play it at all. First of all I need to use potion of uh, flying and then potion of invisibility. And after leaving tavern go through this road. Go upstairs, one more time upstairs. And after this upstairs we're going downstairs. So don't go to the left or to the right. You need to go just through the middle. Most importantly, if you see, we got some characters that uh, can see invisible units. And that's the most problematic part over here. We need to wait for this patrol to pass and not find us. So best way to do it is just to enter turn-based mode and do it turn by turn. After flying up the wall, go to the burning tree or whatever it is. And now we need to be precise after this location. Turn our screen a few times and find this location. So we can just find it over here. Yeah, there it is. So you need to climb on this ladder and you can easily fly over here. Just like that. Now we're triggering second part of end game with the summon of Nautiloid. 
but that's easy part, D just sit in the turn based mode and do it turn by turn, go up and up and up until you meet big doubles door and go through them. And that's last part, we enter in final fight. There are some ways to cheese this fight, with invisibility potions and other stuff, but I decided can I actually beat this fight without cheesing and just playing normally with underleveled characters and basically being pretty weak without any help. I tried to go instantly for the dragon and this like uh, beefy guys who do an insane amount of damage. But surprise surprise, I end up dying. On second attempt, I splitted my characters into two rows and started attacking the brain from two sides. And that was a great idea, because now enemies can't focus down one target and all damage they have more or less evenly split it between all my characters. So hardest enemy when you're approaching this fight like that was, was Dragon, because he firing fireballs at you, he can't go up the ramps, he can't attack, he just throwing fireballs. And that's mean we just need to split our characters with melee and range on the each row, so fireball damage won't hit all your party. And in the end I finally managed to open the brain and go inside, we're facing the final boss. Is it hard? Not at all. I got a lot of firepower in my characters, but most important trick just not to go with every character at once and then attack him. Just go with one, attack him and then continue with all other characters, because his brain turning damage on your characters when you're attacking him. And after brain is destroyed, we can destroy Octopus and finally say In the Ball's name All 5 Royal's achievements is done. Go and watch how I beat Baltus Gate 3 with Potato or just Salami.